So, uh, what was the reasoning behind bringing Dion off the cup? What, what went into that? I told you when he was healthy, he'd come practice. That was it. Was there something that you needed to see, like a kind of a clearance point for him? We, like with all of our players, we're going to double check. We never want to put a guy's out. We take the health and safety of all of our players serious. So, we had a ramp up plan. We felt good with it. He felt good with it with the doctors, and they cleared him, and that's why he practiced. Uh, those positions at yeah, the real. Linebacker. And I'll say this. Um, I'll give Deion credit. He's going to come out here. He's going to compete. He'll work his way back in. And it's going to be hard. It's going to be hard to get on the field in that room because, and that's what you want in that competition because Rashawn and Mike Walker are doing a great job. And we got to see what Troy can do. Lamman, Dorian, they've had good preseasons. Now, Quit, who's been a vet, and you had Deion. It's going to play itself out. But I will say this about Deion. I'll give him credit because he, he got the right mindset to come out here and prove something. So he knows what he's got to improve off from last year, and that competition's real. So I do appreciate him. He wants to, he wanted to get back and wanted to compete. We'll see where it goes. The, uh, the Anderson got his first action uh, mm-hmm. the other night. How did he do, Troy? Um, like most rookies, things you could clean up. I, I wasn't a lack of effort. You, you saw you know some things flash, but his first time out there, um, like always, there's always things to clean up. Not out there for a couple of the 11 on 11. Was that planned or? He was at different places. He was out there competing. Okay. Uh, you also had Avery Williams working in the corner. Yeah, it's a contingency plan. So, you know, you, you down, it gave us an opportunity. So you take every obstacle and create an opportunity out of it. You know, it's how your mind works. So, you, you know, whether I agree or not, you got to make cuts early in camp. Those are where the rules are, right? You go from mid 90, 85, 80. So part of the reason you saw the little mix and match with AJ and then putting Avery out there is, I gave him the Troy Brown treatment. He's going he's to be with the offense, but if you're going to go heavy on a certain side of the ball, if you got a guy that can get you out of the game, so we're just working contingency plans. So an opportunity arose today. Um, appreciate Doug and his staff. We tried to grind him today. You, know, you come off a plane at 4 in the morning, got a day off, got guys come out here, and you want to see who can grind in it. We did a lot of we – didn't, we didn't try to go bombs down the field, but we wanted to see who could grind through practice. A lot of inside run. Um, and really, all I want to see was who, who could compete all the way through practice and improve, and I thought we got that today. You read the way you injured Jalen Dalton the other day. How serious was that? I'm not going to discuss it, but, you know, we waited him injured. What were your overall thoughts with the team in this joint practice setting? I know you want to have intensity, physicality. And yeah, I felt like this. You know, you kind of have an adrenaline early on, excitement. You got lulls like they're in the game. I thought there was a middle part of that practice. Um, well, they did a good job of – we had some decent pockets, but they were able to get their long up front. It's a long front. And so they did a nice job. They tipped some balls. So it makes you improve. Right? We, we felt like we're solid in the pocket, but their counterpunch, they can't get there. They're, they're length. And so that's, a good, that's what I wanted to see up that front. That's a good front. It's a good scheme. And it'll make us better. And what do you say about the opportunity that the team is having? I know, like, in the second piece of the game, it's the Jets kind of choose some guys out. In the first piece of the game, you've got to let them go for the win. That culture and Hold on, say that again. No. I did what in the first reason again? Oh, like you let him go, go for a win at the end of the game, you know, on the fourth down. Just like building that new culture sure. and mentality. What's that all about? Well, that opportunity in the first game, right? It was his first game, and the way the game went, found an opportunity and see, you know, you can't make those situations up. You can't say no to the practice. Go finish the game. Four minute defense. We got the ball back. Got a fourth down. Obviously, I wouldn't go for the tie in the preseason. Fourth down, in pressure situation. See what happened. They converted. Uh, last week, we were trying to be smart. We needed guys to play. We played everybody we could. We didn't want to play anybody extensive amount of time, knowing that today. So we gave an opportunity to all our guys to get reps, and that's why we played Felipe. And how did the players react just to having those chances to go out here and try to win the game? They reacted well. Uh, like I said, after the game, I mean, there's some things. We got to improve on, but we had an opportunity uh, to potentially tie it, I guess. You know, you're down eight. We would have gone for two. I know people don't want to see a tie in the preseason, but we weren't going to concede that if we had, we had been able to punch it in. Uh, you know, I told Felipe he played hero ball. Maybe give a couple of those next time, but uh, I don't fault him after he was trying to truck everybody on the field. He was It was like a shooter. He was heat checking himself, so we'll get that straight, but it was good. Right, you've talked a lot during camp, really since you got here, about trying to treat everybody equally and trying to. 
human nature would say that's tough to do. How do you go about doing that? How do you, what, I think it would be fair, but no, everybody's like, I don't know, kind of like raising kids, you know? They're not all wired the same. Try to be consistent and fair, but there may be certain techniques you got to use for certain kids. Um, every player I've ever coached, I'm not comparing them to kids, but the, the same analogy. You got to be fair and consistent with the rules and understand everybody's their different phase of their life, career, different things going on. There's different things that make them tick. But, you know, we treat everybody fair. Now, there's a pay scale in the NFL. So when you pay certain guys, there's a great expectation. So there is a bigger expectation for Grady, Jake, guys like that. But the rules are the rules. We, you know, we don't, we loathe entitlement around here. And uh, these guys are doing a good job. Obviously, we have a major cut down coming in a week. What do you need to see from this core of wide receivers to separate themselves, specifically in this week? Yeah. Um, it's another challenge to, to, to get to be as objective as we can. Guys that deserve more reps, opportunities. Uh, you know, we'll, we'll see on Friday, make the plan for Saturday. You know, there's some decisions we got to make. Another opportunity for a lot of guys to go out there and play in a, in a game. Uh, it's just consistency, what we're looking for, guys we can trust. Coach, do you gain any insights into how guys will adapt and adjust in, you know, two joint practices and then seeing the same team again in a preseason game just the day after? Like, does that give you any, any learning? No. Because you come out here, and then that's what I appreciate about this. I, I know everybody, uh, you guys have a tough job to do. Everybody wants to, you know, have a winner or loser on every snap. There's so many variables that go in there. You're controlling situations. Like, you're not doing really move the ball. You're calling, you're, you're putting situations out there. You're not tackling. Uh, there's no there's no cheerleaders on either. So just having real coaches. They're over there. You're objectively looking at it. So, you know, if a guy gets in, the, you're in the red zone period, scores a touchdown, nobody's over there squirting water bottles and pom-poms like you've done something. On to the next play because you're trying to be objective and so that's what I appreciate about Jacksonville and we try to do the same here. So, um, you know, we'll get back to film. There's obviously things that we want to work on, but I wanted to see us grind it out. And so we tried to make it as hard as possible. Called a lot of inside runs, just old fashioned D led. I hope you could get fired up seeing a little old fashioned uh, inside run there. So that's what we were trying to accomplish. When it comes to what you're talking about after the game, about Desmond and being hard on him and not waiting for him, at what point did you know that he was somebody who could handle that type of coaching and it kind of be like, in your face about it? It's not necessarily. I mean, I don't treat him like a rookie. We're not going to, you know, I think the worst thing you can do is you sit there and lower the expectations for somebody. He's, we're trying to get him ready to, to play, you know, real, Sunday NFL football, and uh, if you make it too easy on him, you're not doing him a favor.